Genesis chapter number 25 is where we'll be this evening. Genesis chapter 25. And then here in a few weeks, we'll go back to Genesis chapter number 1. Amen. <laughs> We're going to read down through verse about 10, and uh, we're going to take our thought from there as we uh, look into the, uh, the, the end of Abraham's life here. And so we, we, we've gone all the way through from, uh, from, I believe it was, what was it, chapter 12 we started out, I believe it was, and all the way up through, and the Lord's just really, really helped us, and uh, so I, I pray it's been a blessing to you. And I want to finish it off the same way we've been the whole time. I want you to be encouraged. I want you to uh, just desire more from the Word of God. And uh, so we're going to stand all together this evening in Genesis chapter 25. Let's stand all together, we can and will. We'll stand and we'll read down verses 1 through 10. We'll take our call for this evening. There's some lineage here, by the way. If you don't know Bible names. I struggle with this. I, I struggle with this regular things. All right, so uh, we're, we're going to give it the old college try. Is that what they say? <laughs> then again, Abraham took a wife, and her name was Keturah. And she bare him Zimran, and Jokshan, and Medan, and Midian, and Ishbak, and Shua. And Jokshan begat Sheba, and Dedan. And the sons of Dedan were Asherim, and Letushim. And Laoman. And the sons of Midian, Ephi and Ephraim, and Hanok, and Abida, and Eldah. All these were the children of Keturah. Hallelujah. We will read those again. The verse number five. And Abraham gave all that he had unto Isaac. But unto the sons of the concubines, which Abraham had, Abraham gave gifts. And sent them away from Isaac, his son, while he yet lived eastward unto the east country. And these are the days of the years of Abraham's life, which he lived. And hundred, threescore, and fifteen years. Then Abraham gave up the ghost and died in a good old age, an old man and full of years, and was gathered to his people. And his sons Isaac and Ishmael buried him in the cave of Machpelah in the field of Ephron, the son of Zohar the Hittite, which is before Mamre. This is the field which Abraham purchased of the sons of Heth. There was Abraham buried and Sarah his wife. You can be seated in this evening here in chapter number 25. We have read of the, uh, the ending of this great man of faith's life. These verses tell us of the lineage and then the death of Abraham. As we have looked at now for about 18 months, 18 months if my calculations are right, uh, we started in November, about the end of November 2022. So we're right around that, that area. Uh, our series has been entitled, Abraham, a Man of Faith. Through this series, we've seen the good. Through this series, we've seen the bad of his life. We have seen bright moments of faith, and we have seen dim, but sort of almost dark moments that uh, a failure that Abraham has gone through. Yet one thing never changed. God's promise. God's promise never changed. See, God's promise was not conditional. It wasn't a conditional promise. God said, I'm going to do this, and that's what I'm going to do. And there was nothing that Abraham could do to do away with that. Abraham tried his best uh, on most days, Brother Matt, to try and be the man that God wanted him to be. And so, but throughout all of this, even the failures, we never see God's promise failing. He made a promise that he was going to follow through on. Here tonight, I want to preach on this thought for just a few moments. I want to preach on the results of faith. The results of faith. See, we can go through this life and go to Pete, just live our life, do our thing, 
and get by on our own and never see the blessings of God. I'm talking about even as a child of God. There are, there are folks who are genuinely saved who don't want to please God. I, I, that, that just breaks my little mind all to pieces. I don't understand that. I can't fathom that. Can't fathom how uh, that God can save you, forgive you of your sin, give you eternal life in heaven, and you not want to do nothing for Him here. But that's that's some people. They're gonna have to answer to God for that, not me. And but it, that that baffles me <clears throat> tonight when you think about that. But the result of faith, Abraham, a man who in his old age had no children, he was eighty more years old, had no children. Had a child with Hagar. Then he was 100 years old before he ever got to see the promised seed. Before God ever showed him the promised seed. 100 years old. A lot of faith for that. Don't you think? Took a lot of faith. We see here in chapter 25 that after Sarah had died, we looked at uh, last week, a couple weeks ago anyway. We see in chapter 25, after Sarah died, he took Keturah to be his wife. And he had six more sons. Here's a man who up to his 84 years old had no kids. And now he's got eight sons before he dies. You see, what looks impossible to us is simple to God. What looks impossible to us, God looks at and says, yeah, I got that. But Brother Mike Brown, don't you have faith? When we're looking at it being a mountain, and God saying it's just a molehill, step over it. Because of faith, that's wavering. Abraham here, and he had some moments of wavering faith. We know that. We've studied that. We've seen that. But we miss out on so much stuff because of our lack of faith. Brother Tom, I want to take the time this evening and preach on that right there, the results of faith. And I want this message to be an encouragement to you to stick with the stuff. I want this to be uh, an encouragement to you to stay with God. No matter, no, no matter what somebody else does to you, no matter how, if you get up tomorrow morning you got a hangnail, don't quit God. Amen. There's been people quit God for a whole lot less. Amen. Well, I, I, my boss man came in and yelled at me. God don't even like me no more. Shut up. Quit crying. Right? Suck it up. Trust God. Amen. I promise y'all. I promise you, there is nothing too big for you. Now, we say that all the time, don't we? Oh, there's nothing too hard for God until it gets hard in our lives. <laughs> When it gets hard in our lives, Brother Richard, we're like, well, there might be one thing too hard for God. <laughs> no, there is nothing too hard for God. And we've seen that all through Abraham's life. And let's just be dog honest tonight. You've seen it in yours, too. God allows us to go through some stuff. He allows us to go through some trials so that we see Him on the other end. Amen. That way, probably the next time that that trial comes my way, I can say, oh, God's already done this. God's already fixed this. But the next time you might be going through something, I say, hey, let me tell you what he did for me. And you're a child of God. I'm a child of God. He's going to do it for you too. Amen. So for just a few minutes this evening, the results of faith. Look like what we pray for. Father in heaven, thank you for this evening. Thank you for the rain. Thank you for all those safely who arrived here. Please bless our night tonight. Let us be engaged. Let us be uh, open to change. Let us touch our hearts and allow us to hear and to uh, be convicted of what you see fit. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 <clears throat> amen. The last account that we see here in the life of Abraham is what is called a transitional text. Okay? It, is, it, it means exactly what it sounds like it means. It's a transitional text. We're moving away from the life of Abraham. And looking more into the life of Ishmael and Isaac, his son. So it's just transitioning over. The focus is leaving him and transitioning to someone else. But before this transition takes place, there is a little more information that the Lord wants for us to have concerning the life of this man, Abraham. The focus this evening is going to...
going to be on how the Lord blessed him and how it blessed him for his faith. We find back in the early part of his life, both Abram and Sarah at that point in their life, they were both begging God for a child. They both wanted a child, and they were begging him to give them one. I believe that Abraham was so wanting a child, Abram at the time, so wanted a child, Brother Mike McPhail, that he probably from time to time was a little down. I mean, you get to be in your 80s and you ain't had a child and you're wanting a son more than anything. I'm sure there's some times when you, <laughs> Brother Pete's like, not nah, that age. <laughs> I'm done. <laughs> Amen. But I'm sure there were some times that instead of being the big strapping, let's go work in the field, I'm sure he was a little monkey, I'm sure. I just want a boy. Lord, why can't I have a son? And I followed you over here. I've I, I, I left and, and come over here. Lord, why can I not have one? I'm sure the Bible doesn't say that he begged and begged and begged, but let's just be honest. If his wife would go as far her right round as she did with Agar, I'm sure she was doing anything and everything she could to please her husband. So they were they were struggling. They were they were honoring God. They were doing, they had moved, and here they are. They're like, all right, Lord, what are you going to do with us here? We want a boy. What are you going to do? And it didn't happen. And they wanted it. Now, don't you think that Abraham would have loved to be in his prime, you know, in his 60s? <laughs> Some of y'all like that. Yeah, I'll give you that one. I'll give you that one. Be like us teenagers in our 30s and 40s, right? Hey, man. No, but seriously, don't you think he would rather have had a boy when he was young and he could have shown him everything and maybe maybe gone out in the backyard through the sheep around? <laughs> you know, threw the football around a little bit, throw the baseball around a little bit, just in, enjoying time. Let me, let me say this while I bring that up and just kind of Don't think that my faith's wavering. My faith's wavering because he's not heard my prayer again. He's not answered my prayer. So it's got to be my faith. Listen, don't listen to all those faith healers and stuff mm -hmm. that say, you didn't get healed because of your lack of faith. Mm -hmm. They're liars. Right. That's right. God doesn't do nothing on my time. God does right. it on yeah. his time. Amen. So don't get discouraged tonight. Don't get downtrodden. Don't, don't get defeated tonight just because... Something hasn't happened in your life. My goodness, we've looked at Abraham here and, and what he was begging God for and didn't see it until he was a hundred years old. Brother White, could you imagine having a kid 20 years ago? When you were a hundred? <laughs> Abraham, some of them didn't get that, but you did. Amen. It's been a while. It's been a while. So I forgot how old you were. That's what it was. But Sarah probably felt inadequate as a woman. She probably felt inadequate not being able to provide her husband his desire. Probably begged God continuously to give her a child. Y'all think she may have been discouraged from time to time? Amen. Amen. Y'all think she may have been downtrodden? I do. I do. I believe she may have been. It took faith for these people to stay in. Have, have you ever been so discouraged, maybe maybe, maybe to the point of, of, of just wanting to quit because something hasn't answered yet? Well, I can think of things right now I'm praying for for some of you. And I'll be honest with you, there are days when I feel down about it. I do. There are some, there are some nights when I wake up in the middle of the night and can't go back to sleep because I've got you and your, your family and your situation, and I'll leave it blank like that because nobody needs to know. And I'm not looking for a pat on the back to you. <laughs> and I ask God, why? why? Why are we going through this? Lord, why? Why is this? And do you know what he tells me? Just wait. And I'm like, yeah, but I want to know now. <laughs> and he tells me, just 
way it doesn't have to have a weird end. See, I don't know when I have no weird end things going to open up. This is it. I don't know when everything's going to get better. I don't know when the 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 mind attacks and when the when the uh, physical ailments. I don't know when those things are going to go away. I, I don't know if they'll ever go away. But I do know that God comforts you through each one of them. And that's what was going on in their lives. They were struggling here because they, they wanted something so bad. And yeah, they may have took a detour or two in their life, but haven't we all? Haven't we all not trusted those deep? Haven't we all not trusted God from time to time? I, no, I have. I've been guilty of it. It's, it's, it's thrown me into a time of defeat. It's thrown me into a time of depression in my own life. Not be okay. I'll kick these shoes off you, walk a mile in them, and let me know how you feel. Look, when you got to get up every morning and look at this face, it'll run, it'll mess you up. Hey man, I don't know how in the world my wife does it. She's the same. But don't let it defeat you. Don't let it get the best of you. Stay in it, just like they did. They kept the faith. They kept the faith. And that's what's going to, that's what's going to push us through. Listen. Just like just like Paul said, he said, I believe it's in Acts, he said, I got to thank myself happy. Yeah, right. <laughs> Amen. You. There are days as a Christian, right. there are days as a pastor that I've got to wake up and be like, I got to make myself happy. I got to just say, all right, Lord, I don't want to be happy today. I don't want to. Lord, what I really want to do is I really want to be mad. Can I just be mad today? Can I just walk around and sulk? Can I just sit around in my own little pity party? And he said, sure, go ahead, but what are you going to do for me? Yeah. Listen, when we're in our own heads and whenever we're, we're out of faith, when we're, we are not walking in God, who are we helping? Yeah. Brother Mike, am I saying that you're never going to get angry? Probably not. Probably, yeah, you probably won't. Boys, am I saying you'll never get angry? We're going to get angry, every one of us. The Bible says to be angry and sin not. Amen? There are some times whenever that's going to happen. Am I saying sometimes that you'll never get never get downtrodden, never get defeated, never get depressed? No. I had a guy say one time, there was a little boy sitting across, who was in a big prayer, prayer room, and this guy said, I'm just battling I'm battling depression. This old guy comes up out of his chair says, if you're a child of God, you should never be depressed. <laughs> I said, you need to read your Bible, son. Yeah, right. There's a whole lot of men that faced it. A whole lot of women that faced it. How dare. That boy left the next day. I never got a chance to talk to him. Early. Sure, but over the course of the past several years, there's been hard times. Brother Reggie, I'm sure there's some times that she ain't hardly been able to put up with you. <laughs> like yesterday. But there were some times that we go through, right, guys? Does that mean we ought to quit? Because we don't get what we want? Brother Tom, Abraham wasn't going to quit. Abraham said, I'm sticking with you. Sarah, you're, I'm staying right with you, honey. You come on right with me. We're going to serve God. We're going to do everything that we can to serve God. Listen, a lesson for today. Sure, we may slip. Sure, we may fall from time to time. But living there and dwelling there on that failure never allows us to get back where he wants us to be. You don't stay there. You're going to fall. You're going to bump your nose. Abraham messed up throughout his life. We saw that. We've seen that. We've read that. We've studied it. But he did not stay there. Let me show you here this evening is how the Lord blessed in, in this. He added to his life because of his faith. Look at in verse number one. I told y'all I wasn't going to read these names again, but I guess I'm going to have to here in a minute. He gave a spouse. He gave a spouse here in verse number one. Sarah had died. Abraham was probably lonely, don't you think? 
Verse number one, then again Abraham took a wife and her name was Keturah. Here we find that Abraham has married another woman. And to many, this looks like Abraham is messed up again. We all know that marriage is between a one man and one woman, right? We all understand that. One man and one woman. It is a union that is entered into with a vow to God that God takes seriously. Some will say that you marry one person, that's the only person that you're allowed to marry until you die. Partially right. Let me explain to you. Go to Romans chapter 7. Some of you looking at play. Go to Romans chapter number 7. Verse number 1. So I want you to, I'm just giving you this because this is a topic that I'll tell you in a minute that Kate has come up here recently, and I want you to know the biblical answer to it. Let's look at what the Bible says. Romans chapter 7, verse number 1. The Bible says, Know ye not, brethren, for I speak to them that know the law, how that the law hath dominion over a man as long as he liveth. For the woman which hath a husband, and husband, is bound by the law to her husband so long as he liveth. But if the husband is dead, she is loosed from the law of her husband. So then if, while her husband liveth, she be married to another man, she shall be called an adulteress. But if her husband is dead, she is free from the law, so that she is no adulteress, though she be married to another man. So the union and the vow between man and woman is a marriage until death do you part, right? That's what we say. We stand up and say, to death do you part. But not both of them. See, when Sarah died, it released Abraham from that marriage. Release just sounds awful, don't it? <laughs> but that's that's released from that vow, from that promise that he made to God. See, people have been for over the past week or two, I've seen this, seen this around, and people were conversating about this. I don't know why it's become such a big deal. Yes, I believe in one wife. Yes, I believe in her having one husband. Absolutely. And I don't believe in, in divorce and remarriage. I don't believe in it. If you already have, stay there. Don't, 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 don't do nothing now. Stay there. All right? You're good. But if something was to happen to me, if I was to die, Brother Mike Brown, she has every right to remarry. So don't walk out of here thinking, oh, Abraham messed up again. He got him another wife. No. No, it's perfectly acceptable, even in today's time. It's perfectly acceptable. Okay? So the Lord allowed Abraham to take this wife, allowed him to have more sons. Now, we're not going to get real deep into the sons because there's not a whole lot said about the sons. So we see his spouse was added. We also see his sons were added. Not a whole lot said here about the spouse or about the sons. However, there is a few things if you look historically about, you would find that um, that most of these sons, they have so intermingled with Ishmael. You can't hardly tell where they're from anymore. See, so you can look at it and you can say, oh wow, this family, this Keturah, gave birth to these six sons by Abraham and they went away from him as well. I can show you here in just a minute why that happened. Why I believe it happened. Okay, why I believe it happened. I got one word for you that I think will prove. Brother Matt, that word jealousy. Jealousy. I truly believe that that is jealousy is what caused uh, them to do that. Look in verse 5. What does the Bible say? And Abraham gave all that he had unto who? See, even though he took Keturah as a wife, she was still seen as a concubine to him. Because if you look at the next verse, I believe it's verse 6, says he gave all of his concubines' kids gifts. 
right? Right. Didn't say nothing about his other sons. Well, Hagar gave birth to Ishmael, which was concubine. And then here's Keturah coming along. So the Bible's showing us here that jealousy, jealousy is a nasty, nasty thing. I don't know if y'all have ever been involved in it, but if you've been involved with a family member passing, you've probably been involved in jealousy. Amen. Everybody wants what that person had because I deserve it. Nope. That was theirs. They worked their whole life for it. That is theirs. If they choose to give it to somebody else, who am I? Who am I to say? <clears throat> Jealousy causes more splits and more splinters in families over stuff. Absolutely. I know we're Baptists, y'all. But they ain't no U-Hauls following behind the hearse. I know we all going to take it with us. when he did it too, verse number 6. What does the Bible say? It says, but unto the sons con uh, of the concubines which Abraham had, Abraham gave gifts and sent them away from Isaac his son when? Mm -hmm. While he yet lived. Abraham didn't leave everybody to fight it out. Abraham didn't leave everybody to hit each other in the mouth and find out who got daddy's four wheel. <laughs> Amen. Amen. <laughs> Hey, listen, I think that's ridiculous, but hey, that's where we are in the world today. So many families have been split over this stuff. If you, like I said a moment ago, if it was your parents, it was theirs. Who cares? Listen, if when my dad died, my sister got everything, okay. Boy, that just got some of y'all's blood boiling. Calm down. You can do it different. Stuff. It's going to burn up. Yeah. It does not matter. Oh, but what if he had a bunch of money? And she got a bunch of money. Who cares? Abraham did it so that everybody knew where it was going to go. He said, the boy gets it all. He said, the promised seed gets it all. I'll give you a gift to do it. But he didn't, he didn't, he didn't leave them around, which is the right way to do it, by the way. Don't leave, don't leave folks just guessing. Abraham in his wisdom did it while he was still alive. We'll look at some specifics about his death, and then we'll wrap a ribbon on this thing, and i got to get out of here, okay? Abraham died at 175 years old. Genesis 25, 7 tells us that these, these are the days of the years of Abraham's life which he lived and hundred three score and fifteen years. According to Genesis twelve four, Abraham departed from Haran. Where he departed from, he departed from Haran to the land of Canaan when he was seventy five years old. So we're able to see that by faith Abraham spent a hundred years in Canaan. He spent a hundred years in the promised land by faith. By faith he was there. By faith, we see that through that time, he not only got to see the promised land and lived there for 100 years, but in that time, he got to see his son Isaac and got to spend about 15 years. Now, I didn't know this until I got to study this, but got to spend about 15 years with his twin grandsons, Jacob and Esau. I didn't know that. Wasn't that awesome? Even not having a young until he's 100 years old, he still got to see his grandbaby. I think that's pretty slim. God blessed him. Also with material wealth over the years. It was interesting to see the blessings of the Lord shed on Abraham for his faith. According to the Bible, he lived a good long life four years, as verse 8 says. How we live our lives determines how we'll die. And I'm going to say it again that you've heard it so you understand it. How we live our lives determines how we die. Now, Pastor, what do you mean? If I live a life for the glory of God, then I'm going to die in the glory of God. And 
that's not a work of salvation. I'm just telling you that you're not. I want to hear well done. Yeah. Thou good and faithful servant. I don't want to just hear done. Come on in. I want to hear well done. What's that going to take, Grandma? It's going to take effort. It's going to take time. It's going to take giving God my all. It's going to take doing everything for the Lord that he asks of me. Whether I like it or I don't like it. Amen. You know why we don't serve God to the ability that Abraham did? It don't suit me. It's not what I want to do. You want me to leave Haran at 75 years old? And you want me to move to this other town that you're saying is the promised land? How many times has God asked us to do something? How many times has God, through his preaching, through his teaching, through the leading, how many times has he said, this is what I want from you? And we say, there's faith. You'll have to answer that out loud. I know we all will. There's been those times in each one of our lives that God wants something from us. And we just call it lack of faith, call it what you will, but the faith that it's going to mess up the way I live. Abraham, like I said, died at 175 years old. He was full of years. If we want to die successfully for the Lord, then we're going to have to give that effort and live a successful life for him. And Abraham did just that. He honored the Lord in his life. Something that there was a song years ago, and I'm not going to butcher your ears by making you listen to it. But it said, I want my life to count for Jesus. That's what I want. And I hope tonight that you inside your heart can answer that and say, I want my life to count for Jesus. No, no, no matter what it is that he wants, I want him to get the glory for my life. I want him to have all the glory. For it. I want my life to count for him. I want it to mean something for the cause of Christ. I don't just want to look and, and people look and say, oh, what all he had at the end of this thing that they can take. That's not what I'm interested in. I want people to be able to look and say, you know what? I remember where he stood. <clears throat> I remember that he didn't wait. I remember he preached that Bible unapologetically. I remember that if you had a question, he'd give you a Bible answer. Mm -hmm. That's making your life count for something. Mm -hmm. That's having something to do for God. Mm -hmm. That's allowing the Lord, Brother Matt, to use you in a way that's supernatural. Mm -hmm. I don't want my kids to care more about my possessions they give him my death. I want them to care more about the heritage that they have. The goodly heritage. The godly heritage. I want my kids, and this is just me, you can do what you want to do. I want my kids to be able to take daddy's old Bibles and thumb through them real easy because the pages are going to be kind of messed up. Look through and say, "Oh, huh, Dad was, oh, Dad was praying about that right there. Mm -hmm. Oh, I remember them. I remember them. Dad was praying for for them right there. Mm -hmm. Oh, man, you know what? Dad was praying. I remember when that person got saved. Dad was praying about them getting saved right there. That's me and my son." Yeah, it's great. And, and you should. The Bible says in Proverbs that you know, the man should leave an inheritance to his children and his children's children. I'm not saying there's nothing like that. But if all I leave my children is money and things, I have failed them. Mm -hmm. I have failed them miserably. I want to have the faith as Abraham did to stand for the generations. I want to... Oh, I, I want my great grandchildren to talk about Tepal's love for the Lord. Mm -hmm. Amen. Whether they knew me or not, I want the stories. You say, "Oh, we want every pass down." Why not? 
You're still talking about Abraham, ain't you? Right. Amen. You're still talking about that. So why why can't why can't my boy tell his son, you know about your grandfather? He did the business of God. He loved the Lord. And then that kid say, you know what? I never really knew that all that much. I, I was young when he died, but he did that business of God. Then my great grandchildren see that and say, you know what? I, I never even knew the man, but all I ever hear about him is. You saw when you're talking about biblical faith. Y'all still know about everything there is to know about Spurgeon, don't you? Mm -hmm. Y'all still know about everything there is to know about Adrian Rogers, don't you? Mm -hmm. Amen. Don't think you can't leave a heritage to. Mm -hmm. Amen. It's important. The results of faith is you'll leave that heritage. Mm -hmm. The results of faith is that God can use you for a great, great work. Listen, there, there's, no, there's nothing better than leaving that heritage. There ain't no boat or no truck or no toy on the earth that is worth leaving that heritage mm -hmm. like Abraham did to his. Mm -hmm. But you know what it's going to take? It takes us allowing the Lord to have all of us by faith. By faith. We have to trust Him. I was going to I'm not going to leave out here today and say, God, I'm going to give you all my life. I go out here and receive all the blessings. How many times have we prayed, Lord, I'm going to stop this, and then we're back doing it. Right? He, newsflash, he knows what you're going to do. Mm -hmm. Even when you pray and say you're not, he knows you're going to. So are we going to truly give ourselves to him? Are we going to truly get to see the results of faith? Abraham did. Brother Reggie, you can too. Brother Mike, you can too. Brother Tom, you can too. All of us here can. We find we find Abraham in Hebrews 11, what's called the Hall of Faith. Mm -hmm. Through those verses, we see in Hebrews chapter 11, verses 8 through 22, the effect, the effect that this man's faith had on a generation, even up to mm -hmm. today. Mm -hmm. Let's push toward that mark today. Mm -hmm. Let's rightly. Let's rightly affect that generation, and that generation will rightly affect the generation after them, and then keep on going down. How are we going to win the world? One at a time. One at a time. Y'all realize tonight that if it started with me, and I win Cy, and then Cy wins Zed, Zed wins JV, JV wins Zed, Zed wins Matt, Matt wins Cat, Cat wins Danny. On, so forth, so y'all realize what will happen by the time it gets over here? You have reached how many people? Everyone. Why? Because we reached one. By faith. Do you have the faith that Abraham did to see the results that God put in his life? Guys, it took a long time to see the results. Don't get discouraged. Don't get down on yourself. Don't feel like, oh, it's never going to happen. It might happen tomorrow. And if you quit today, you will never see it. Right. I wonder, Brother Pete, how many times I quit and it was just over here. Mm -hmm. I've wondered how many times, y'all, y'all, I, I read that story or told you that account of that person who was swimming and the waters was so foggy and so cold that it's just like, just get me out of here, I'm done. And they were less than 100 yards from shore. And they'd swim, I don't know how many miles. Don't quit. Abraham and Sarah could easily quit. They chose to keep pressing on. They got to see the results of their faith. Heads bowed, eyes closed. Heads bowed, eyes closed.